Hey, what's up guys? Alex here. Uh, in this lesson, we are going to record some guitar on top of the MIDI pad that we created in the last video. Okay, uh, pretty exciting stuff. I can't wait to show you and let's get into it. <music> Okay, so let's talk about some considerations when recording guitar. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to create an audio track. You can do that by hitting Command Shift T, or you can right click and add audio track. Okay, I'm going to turn off the record arm on this one and turn it on this guy. So you'll see down here, uh, if you watch the Set Up Your Hardware video, you'll see these are the inputs that I labeled. And if you've watched that video, you'll know how and why I created this guitar. Okay, um, I'll, put a, I'll put a link to that video in the description. But one thing that you wanna consider for sure is if you go to the settings, command comma, is this guy right here. Again, I'm not editing audio, I'm recording live. So I'm bringing this, this slider as far to the left as I can. And I found 256 samples to be pretty acceptable for me. Okay. Another thing you might want to do is add uh, a tuner. If you don't have a tuner plugin, I think there's some that you can get for free. Uh, I have the waves one and it, and it works pretty good. And here it is. If I play guitar into this, it'll help me tune my guitar. And that's a good idea. It's just handy to have because your guitar is already plugged into your computer. Um, and, and you won't have to kind of fiddle around with a, a tuner on your phone or a tuner that you might have bought from a store or anything like that. Like it's already plugged into your computer. And so that's super handy. Once you're done tuning, just go ahead and delete that. You don't want to uh, tax your computer any more than you need to. Okay. Alrighty. So I still have my metronome on. I'm probably going to play to a metronome here. And when I actually record the guitar, I'm going to cut away and then I'll just, just so I'm not saving you the tedium of me going through and figuring out what to play and stuff like that. I'll have already recorded it and then we'll, we'll come back in. Okay. You can try, but I would not put any effects on the guitar channel, uh, just yet. Uh, you you could and you'll probably get away with it if you want to put reverbs or chorus or anything down here uh, but in 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 my world I like to just leave it raw and then I can add the effects in later so you might want some distortion and stuff like that and that's fine uh, so go ahead and try to add those in and record them but just keep in mind that the more stuff you put down here uh, the more it's going to tax your computer and really you want all your computer's resources dedicated to you recording your guitar. It's not like MIDI. It t it's a pretty high demand to record an instrument or, or an audio sample uh, in real time. And so you want to allow your computer to just breathe and uh, have all the processing power just working on that. I'm going to turn off auto monitor. And that means as soon as I press record, it's going to start playing uh, the signal through the speakers. But because I'm actually using the input right now to talk into this microphone, if I do that, you'll get some weird doubling effect and I don't want that. So I turned off auto monitor, but you could just as well leave it on and, and play with it, turn it on and off and you can see the effect. Okay. And choose guitar input. And now when you're ready to record, you're going to arm the track. Okay. <laughs> Let's see me talking is jumping into here and that's kind of weird. Uh, so you're telling the computer uh, that this is the track you want to record on. When you press record up here, that's basically telling the musicians that you're ready when they are. You could also do that by pressing F9. And then when you're ready to record, you can just hit space bar or click play. Okay. So one thing that you'll want to do for sure is set the levels. And you can see me talking, um, I'm in and around like the minus 24 to minus 12 kind of range. Uh, when you record guitar, that's probably about the signal size that you're going to want to have, depending on what you're doing. But if your signal is way down here, you might want to go to your interface and turn up the mic gain or the, the gain a little bit, um, just so that you get a clean signal. If you're recording guitar and the, the waveform looks really thin and small, you're going to have to turn it up 
so much that uh, it's no good. Just just record it a little bit hot. Don't peak for sure. See, I'm peaking at uh, minus 7.9, so minus 8 decibels, and that's pretty good. That gives me a lot of headroom to work with, and that's a good, strong signal. It's ideal, okay? Alrighty, so I'm going to cut away and then uh, record this guitar, and then I'll meet you back here uh, once I'm done. Okay. Okay, so you can see uh, my three recordings here. And in MIDI, we could just hit Q and quantize everything. And so you're probably wondering, how can we uh, now edit the timing of this? And we absolutely can. If I just double click on that and bring this up for a second. And it's called uh, Stretch. Okay, let me click this. Now I turn mine over to Stretch HD, and that's just a higher quality uh, stretching algorithm uh, that you'll probably want to use. And so the, the method of stretching or getting these uh, guitar clips, or sorry, transients onto the line is pretty easy. You can go down here. Where is it? Oop, I have to click Stretch, sorry. Go down here, and you'll see that shows up. But if I just click it and drag it, you'll notice all the audio to the left and right of it stretches with it. And that's no good. And the reason is, is because it doesn't know where to start and end the stretching. So if I click this and then click that and click that, and now I move the middle one, you can see it doesn't adjust the audio outside of that region. Now there is a quicker way to do that. And that is, let me find one here. If you press Option or Alt, it will it will automatically place those ones on either side of the transient for you. So, for example, I want to get this one in place. Holding Alt, I just grab it, slide it, and there you go. See, this one is off the grid a little bit, so I'm going to go down here, hover over this, press Alt or Option, click it, drag it onto the line. Okay. And you can just go through and and do that. Um, I won't bring you through the whole process of me fixing this up because that is tedious. And there's a whole debate that we can get into on how much do you quantize a guitar or a vocal before you kind of take the soul out of it. Uh, but I don't want to get into that debate. Basically, there's a, the guitar players like myself believe that your, your kind of heart and soul when you play a guitar is in your little imperfections in timing and volume. And um, so I, I, me personally, I like to keep those little imperfections as much as possible so long as it's basically on time uh, because it makes it sound human. Uh, it, the, the biggest uh, argument is with hi-hats. With, with safe in trap music, you want your hi-hats to be rigid and exactly on time. But if you were recording a rock song, you would want a little bit of play. You would want it humanized. You would want a little bit of variation in volume and timing so that it sounds like a real human is playing it. If I were to go and just slam all these transients perfectly onto the grid, um, it would sound a little bit less human. And uh, that's up, it's up to you to make that decision whether you like it that way or not. But for me personally, I'll go through and I'll just grab like every but whichever one's really off the grid and kind of fix it to adjust it onto the grid okay so i've gone through i've soloed this track and i've just kind of listened and went through as it played and kind of adjusted a few markers here and there one thing that you'll notice is that sometimes you'll get a marker let me see if i can find one like for example this one okay i don't I don't want to adjust the audio at the end of the transient. Uh, I want to preserve that. And so if I wanted to get rid of that, you have to go to onsets and then you can double click it to get rid of it. Also, if you want to move one, you can grab it and move it. Or you can, and if you don't want it to click to a grid, you hold shift 
and see how it's smooth. Um, and that that's true for anything in Bitwig. This one I don't want, so I'm going to double click and get rid of it. That way, once I go to stretch, that's where the marker is placed, and then that's where I can grab it and stretch the audio. Okay. Um, and so just go through with a not so fine tooth comb uh, and just kind of move the stuff onto the grid. See, it's still a little bit off, but uh, me personally, I, I like it that way. And it's not exactly a pristine recording. I know I, I could have done much better for sure. Um, and I probably will uh, when, I, when I get serious with this song. If I get serious with it, then I'll probably go and re-perform this whole part. So I'm basically going to do that with these other two tracks here. And we'll see how it sounds afterwards. Okay, so let's recap here because I realize now that I kind of blew through the first half of that video. So what did we learn? Uh, well, first of all, uh, you're going to plug in your guitar, that's obvious, into your interface. You'll create an audio track. You'll set the input to whatever you've created. Okay, mine happened to be guitar. Um, you've tuned the guitar, whether it's a, using a plug-in or uh, an external tuning device of some kind or even a tuning fork, whatever you got. Okay, you've played a little bit of the guitar and you've watched these meters. You've made sure that it's peaking around, say, minus seven, but it depends. If you're going to add distortion, that's going to add level to it. And so you want to maybe record a little bit quieter than that. Okay, we've recorded our guitar sample. We've double clicked here. And we put it in stretch HD mode. That is, if you click this, choose stretch HD. Um, We've gone to our onsets. You've kind of placed these markers appropriately or moved them around appropriately. And and by appropriately, I mean, control option to zoom in and scroll on your mouse wheel. And by appropriately, I mean, you're placing these markers at the beginning of a transient, which is where you can see the audio comes in. Then you've gone to stretch and you've moved those, uh, you've, you've stretched them to where they need to go. Okay, and you do that for all your guitar tracks. And now we're going to get into editing. First of all, for organization's sake, I'm going to rename some of these. So Command R, this is the Rhodes, the Fender Rhodes. Uh, we'll call this, we'll just call it Guitar One for now. And now I'm going to group these. So hold shift and click the top one so that they're all highlighted and hit command G to put them in a group and I'll rename the group now guitars okay so now I can close this up and it's out of my way for when I go on to make other tracks and if I want to edit them I can do this if I want to add an overall effect to the guitar group I can double click here and add overall effects whether it's reverb or whatever you might have okay so now let's um, let's get into adding effects on these these guys a little bit, making it a little bit more pleasing to listen to. I'm going to shorten my loop range to here. And let's have a listen to what I have so far. OK, so right off the bat, you can notice that the volume kind of varies a little bit too much. So that means we might want a compressor. Also, let's listen. Also, there's all this kind of crap uh, in between all the strums, like these right here. And I could go and I could highlight them all and delete them, but that's a pain in the ass because then I got to go through and do that in between each transient. So to fix that, first of all, uh, well, we could use a gate. But first of all, like I said, let's just normalize the volume. So let's find a compressor. Okay. And actually Bitwig, I think even has, if you click the preset button, Bitwig has guitar compression. And that's just a starting point. If you don't understand compression, I'm going to make a video on compression later. Uh, but for now, just click guitar compression and then you can, that's a good starting point. So let's listen. <laughs> Okay, so it's done a pretty good job of just normalizing the volume. 
kind of making it all the same way. And I'm not gonna mess around really with these controls. We'll just leave it as the preset guitar compression that Bitwig kind of creates for you just for the simplicity of it, of it. Okay, I'm gonna double click this and shrink it. And now I'm gonna add in a gate. So a gate basically, um, it, it, it only allows uh, the signal to pass through if the volume reaches a certain threshold. So let's go here, choose guitar of one. I'm gonna turn the attack down a little bit. That's how fast it opens the gate. Turn the release down. Bring the threshold up. Okay, well that's all right for right now. We can kind of tweak these a little bit later. One thing that I should do, and I'm gonna place it before the compressor, is actually add an EQ. Let's see, let's grab an EQ too. And the reason I'm doing this is because I wanna set, set it so that my guitar isn't allowed to make a signal, I don't know, say below uh, 100 hertz, okay? Because I don't want, I don't want to hear anything that comes out of my guitar below 100 hertz, and I certainly don't want it competing with any bass that I might add later. And another reason I do this is because when you go into the compressor, um, now these frequencies here are removed, and it's only it's only working on compressing these frequencies, the ones that I actually want to hear. Um, I might even go and high, uh, low pass it, sorry, and bring that up to, uh, I don't know, say, Let's try 8K and see how that sounds. I have a little bit of crackle there, and I think that might actually be coming uh, from my analog gear. Uh, but we'll we'll go with it for now. Okay, so that cleans it up quite a bit. I uh, got the gate working. Why don't we add a little bit of reverb? Well, you could go here and you could bring in the reverb like that, and then you'll have reverb. But I think a good way to do it is to actually go down to your effects track and add a reverb in there. Click Bitwig, reverb. I probably would use a different reverb plugin if I had one. Uh, but re the Bitwig reverb is, is not too bad. So now I have reverb placed on this track. If I go to this one, this is how much of my signal I'm going to send to that reverb. Let's have a listen. Well, sorry, before I do that, I'm gonna, oh, okay, good. The mix is all the way up. Okay, let's have a listen. Okay, not too bad. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna remove a little more from this. Let's try, press Command and click. I'm gonna try 200. I'm even gonna remove more, let's try 300. Not too bad. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit, say 5K. And it doesn't sound as rich on its own, but when it's inside of a dense mix like this, it's gonna sound a lot better, a lot more poppy, okay? So let's go with that for a little bit. All right, let's solo this and this, and let's work on this track. So again, uh, well, you know what? I want the same stuff I did on this on here. So if I click this guitar track, 
shrink that out. Press Option and hold Option. Click and drag it over to there. Hold Option, click, drag it over to there. Hold Option, click, and drag it over to there. You'll notice that I've just copied those exact effects right over to here. So let's listen. Well, obviously, my gate's set a little bit too tight. Let's try and remove the gate. Let's put it back in, but really lower that threshold. Again, let's send a little bit of that signal to the reverb. Let's make it a little bit funky. Let's add in some chorus. There we go. Now there's some great presets for this too. A good one is the vibrato stereo. Let's have a listen. Not bad, maybe I'll speed it up a little bit. It kind of gives you that underwater feel. Um, again, it's not a beautiful performance, but that'll do, I think, for now. All right, let's hear the solo. Super dry, right? Okay, well, let's do this again. I wonder. Ooh, I can just highlight them all, press Option, sh drag them over to there. Look at that. I carried everything. Let's hear it now. I don't think I want chorus, but I do want to send some reverb. Next lesson, we're going to record some drums on top of this. This is not turning out to be the song that I wanted it to be for you guys, uh, but we'll, I'll continue to work on it, fix some of the timing issues and crackling issues that I hear in here. Maybe I'll actually replace this with an acoustic guitar, which is basically the same process, except I'm just using microphones. Uh, I'll kind of play with the effects a tad bit, and then um, that may be before or after we add drums to this track bring it to life, give it some rhythm, because the human animal, we're really all just into rhythm. Uh, melodies are great, but they don't mean anything unless we have drums. Okay, so that's what we'll do next time. And, uh, and I hope to see you then. Please subscribe to my channel if you have any questions or comments. I know I kind of blew through that lesson. Uh, so no doubt you're going to have questions if you've never done this before. So definitely leave them in the comment section below. You can email me directly. Uh, you can find that email address in the about page or you can visit my website alexvan.com uh, and I hope to talk to you if you guys come up with some cool stuff uh, put them in the comments below uh, give us a link let's check them out okay all right uh, I'll see you next time